Hey everyone, I'm done back. I know it's been a while. And anyway, I just jump straight into it. Um, I'm going to do a disclaimer and to say that what I'm about to talk about, um, I'm not a medical professional or, um, or a medical person of any kind. I'm just going to talk about my own experiences with these subjects and whether if you take it or not is completely up to you. And so this subject that I'm going to be talking about is my experience with the COVID-19 vaccine. And so I've had two, yes, two, yes, two vaccines um, or two doses of said vaccine. And so I'll tell you about my story of what happened and yeah, just to kind of relate and and to see and to help with anything that that you may want to question or ask or whatever. So anyway, it started about January time. So it was January. Um I, well actually the ending of January I got an invitation um to them to make an appointment for my first vaccine and so I basically got this invitation because I have other reasons and also medical reasons why I was invited and so I made an appointment about a couple of days later I think about a couple of days later and so I went in and I, well, well, I made an appointment in a football stadium. Well, it wasn't like Wembley Stadium, but it was just a local stadium. And so I just went in. There was literally no one around. So I just, again, went in, no queue. And they had a waiting area. Um, but even though there wasn't very many people around, I just went in and I was just asked to go through and I sat down, waited for the person who was before me and then um, went on the seat, answered some questions, um, just um, kind of reiterated a couple of things and then I had my first vaccine in my left arm, in my left arm. Which was a little bit of a mistake, I think. Mm. Um, and I'll say why in a minute. And so, basically, I had it in my left arm. I was blued. And then um, I had to go to an observation area. So that I had to wait for 15 minutes um, in case if I had anything crop up. Which I didn't. And so I, as soon as 15 minutes were over, I left and went home. And so I would say probably about 10 or 11 o'clock in the evening, I started to feel a little bit tired, but not much more so than usual. And then literally at the stroke of midnight, it started. I got the minor symptoms. And so, it was literally midnight, as I said, and then, um, uh, and then I started to, like, get the chills really badly, and I was, like, shaking like this, and then I thought, look, it's some minor symptoms, probably go to bed, and you'll be wake up in the morning, and you'll be fine. Cut to three hours and 15 minutes later... So about 3.15 in the morning, I had the, I felt like I was in the sauna. And so, um, I was hot, really comfortable, um, because I had, um, a dressing gown on. And then I just took some paracetamol, um, or painkillers, um, because I had, um, something wrapped around me. And then um, I had to take some paracetamol or painkillers. Um, and then I just went back to bed. 
and then about another three hours and 20 minutes later, um, I woke up in a panic attack. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. And then I just felt like I was really out of control. Didn't know what to do. I felt actually quite hot and I was using my asthma uh, pump and so I had no sign of calming down and so I decided to phone 999 <laughs> and and so me being thinking oh god I had something a reaction to the vaccine and so um and so the ambulance came and they test everything um my vitals bloods everything and then something kind of was brought up and so the ambulance person said um matthew uh mr rose um I have to say, we've noticed something in your blood glucose and it's a little bit high, so we're going to take you to the hospital, if you don't mind. And I'm like, okay. So I went to the hospital, um, and so I just went through, and they said that we're going to test you for three things, um, which were um, something with my lungs, um, damaged heart or diabetes. Yeah, so I was quite scared. Um, but I was just taken to a cornered off area and um, it was around about when everything was kind of bad with um, COVID-19 um, here in the UK. Um, so I knew um, I knew that I was safe and and things like that, um, but I had all the tests under the sun, and then I was fine. But I did ask whether if I should go for my second dose, and they were like, "Yes, you should." <laughs> and so um, so I was kind of thinking that I was fine. And then, just to give you a little sneak peek into, this would be a good idea. Um, basically, I had another feeling the next week after that. I thought, maybe I should be tested. I was tested again. And I was tested for type 2 diabetes. And it ended up being positive. So I didn't see that coming. So I will explain more in in that vlog. So anyway, um, coming back to my COVID nineteen vaccine. Sorry. So, so um, as soon as I came home, it took about a day and a half to about two days to get over it, um, and then probably about. Mm, not so long ago, in April, I think about the middle of April, um, I think about nearly a month ago now, um, I went to the same place, uh, you know, same thing, and I did ask about blood clots, and the thing is, they said, well, the doctor said, if you had a blood clot, you would have known in the first, at the first vaccine, so, like, okay, I was fine. And then um, I ended up getting it in my right arm. And the reason why I think it's a bad idea to have it in the left arm, I actually sleep on this arm. And so the other symptom is you get a very, very sore arm. So if you either sleep on your right or your left arm, do it on your opposite side, on your opposite side. So it doesn't matter where where the injection goes in, it as long as you don't sleep on it, because otherwise you may or may not get much sleep, um, which is uh, not great, which happened to me. Um, but um, I had it in my right arm, 
and so again, just kind of same thing, waited 15 minutes in the observation area and then just went home. And then I was kind of waiting for, um, but the good idea is you can take paracetamol or painkillers before the minor symptoms start. So if, if you do get any minor symptoms, it will kind of dull them so that you, you if you do get them, it hopefully won't be as bad. But when it came to midnight, I was like, chills and temperature, chills, temperature, chills, temperature, didn't happen. It didn't happen. So you might get the same symptoms that you had last time, or you may not. But this time, I've got completely different ones. And so, if you're squeamish, don't listen in this video. Um, so, and and I'll give the signal to to when to not listen. Um, and sorry, when when you can listen. So anyway, the second uh, minor symptoms that I experienced was nausea. Yeah. And so, ironically, that's what my mum had as well. So, when she got her first one. And so, I just felt, like, very intermittent nausea pain. And it was kind of very in and out, in and out. And I didn't really notice it. Um, but after, I think... A day that's when it was bad it was very very uncomfortable but after that it kind of slowly dissipated and kind of gradually went away without me knowing and so if that was my minor symptoms like that was fine like I've had worse and so after that I was fine it's fine I haven't really experienced any other symptoms but even though I was pretty much pro vaccine, um, uh, you know, I do believe like everybody has their own kind of view and they're all entitled to it. But also, it's just having the vaccine, and I took it basically. I have obviously family. Um, who are vulnerable, like everybody else. I'm also, unfortunately, vulnerable. Um, and so that was my biggest reason why that I, I wanted to get this vaccine. Um, and I did read up on, like, the signs and the symptoms and the negative stuff and the social media stuff. But the anti-vaxxer thing didn't really um, bother me at all because um, I'm, well, it's just, I I just thought, look, I'm going to get this vaccine regardless. And so that's why that I wanted to go for it. And so the vaccine that I had, as I probably have given it away, was AstraZeneca. And so, my experience, even though at the moment, um, people who are under 40 um, are going to be given a different vaccine. And so, I'm within that age bracket, and so I ended up being fine. And, and you know, I have asthma, I have, unfortunately now, type 2 diabetes, and another thing called Cowden syndrome, which is human genetic disorder. And so if something were to happen, it would have happened there and then in the, um, when I had the first vaccine. And so if you're worried about the vaccine, uh, you know, getting something bad and and things like that as as it's been said 
in the on the news that would you rather experience minor symptoms or COVID-19 so I know which one that I would pick especially unfortunately for my own situation um uh, you know if I got it and I do know unfortunately a couple of people who have had it and gratefully they they are alive but I know which one I would pick and and even though I I believe everybody has a right to their own decision and I'm not forcing anybody but I know which one I would pick if I were you and so anyway I'm going to leave it there until the next time um I hope you're keeping safe and well and you're Meeting, whatever. Anyway, so I'll see you on the next vlog and I'll chat to you soon. So, see ya. Bye. Mm.